Dennis the Menace makes his debut onto the big screen, much to the dismay of his long-suffering neighbour, Mr. Wilson. Released in 1993, this live-action adaptation sees Dennis Mitchell live up to his name of being a menace, as we see him hang out with his friends, where of course all sorts of misbehaving ensues. When Dennis's parents temporarily leave town, Dennis is put into the care of the Wilsons, which makes life a disaster for Mr. Wilson, played brilliantly by Walter Matthol, where Dennis's misguided antics turns his world and sanity upside down. And to make matters worse, a dangerous criminal called Switchblade Sam arrives in town, played by Christopher Lloyd. Can the mischievous ways of Dennis be a match for this creepy foe? Or rather, can this foe survive the antics of Dennis for that matter? So it's time to go back to our childhoods and explore 10 things that you didn't know about the Dennis the Menace movie. The one from the early 90s. So, let's check it out. Number 10, The Origins of Dennis the Menace. The birth of the Dennis the Menace character goes all the way back to 1951, when the troublesome young character started off in a string of comic strips. The character, whose full name was Dennis Mitchell, was the creation of American cartoonist Hank Ketchum, and he came up with the idea of creating the character due to difficulties that he had with his own real-life son, who, like the character, is also called Dennis, as he would frequently refuse to take his naps and trash his bedroom. The name Dennis the Menace came about after Hank's wife, tired of their son's mischievous antics, yelled out at Hank in despair, YOUR SON IS A MENACE! after she supposedly caught him smearing poo all over his bedroom. Ugh. And thus the title Dennis the Menace came about. There is actually some bizarre coincidences surrounding the creation of Dennis the Menace. As at the same time, a British comic strip about a misbehaved boy came out which was also called Dennis the Menace, who was a part of the Beano comics. Not only that, but both characters made their debut on the exact same day, March the 12th, 1951. Like seriously, what are the odds? I always thought of the British Dennis the Menace to be like a parallel UK version of the US Dennis the Menace. And the UK version is still going strongly today. But regardless, the US Dennis the Menace became a popular comic character, and over the years would get several comic book series and adaptations, and at one stage, even Marvel Comics had a go and released a comic book series based on the character, and thus a pop culture icon was born. And it all started from a four-year-old who refused to take a nap, and probably wiped their poo all over the place. Number 9. Other Dennis the Menace Adaptations before the 90s movie came out, which is probably the main thing that my generation thinks of when they think about Dennis the Menace, the character already leapt from the comic page into other medias. The first Dennis the Menace adaptation was a sitcom, which ran on CBS from 1959 to 1963, consisting of four seasons, and was well loved to those who grew up watching it. In 1981, there was an animated TV movie called Dennis the Menace in May Day for Mother. This would lead to an animated Dennis the Menace TV series in 1986, which was produced by Deke Entertainment and ran for two seasons consisting of 78 episodes. This cartoon series was actually my introduction to Dennis the Menace, and I loved the heck out of this show, and I watched it religiously. Now, if I can remember correctly, in the early 90s, it was shown in the mornings Monday to Friday just before school here in Australia, and my five-year-old self couldn't get enough of Dennis and his troublesome behaviour and the torment he inflicts on Mr. Wilson. I mean, look at me with my bowl cut here. I even look a bit like Dennis. In fact, the 1993 film wasn't even the first live-action Dennis the Menace movie. As before that, there was a 1987 TV movie called Dennis the Menace Dinosaur Hunter. I can remember this movie being advertised on TV and being really hyped to see it, as I was a massive fan of the 80s cartoon, so the idea of a live-action movie seemed awesome. However, I can remember sitting down and watching the movie, 
and I just couldn't get into it. I kind of found it boring, or at least it couldn't grab my attention as my mind wandered, so instead I went off to play with my toys. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't good, but it just didn't keep my interest at the time. And I think that this TV movie has now somewhat become a forgotten chapter in the history of Dennis the Menace. Number 8. Dennis the Menace's creator wanted John Hughes to write the movie. Dennis the Menace creator Hank Ketchum took his creation to Warner Brothers, with the possibility of making a theatrical Dennis the Menace movie. However, his one condition was that John Hughes wrote the script. Hughes was a massive fan of the classic Dennis the Menace comic strips, and Hughes and Ketchum had previously met up to discuss the movie, where they would talk in detail about the characters. Hughes would have been the right choice to go with at that time, as just a few years earlier, he wrote Home Alone, which was about another young child misfit getting into all kinds of scrapes. However, I do feel like parts of Dennis the Menace the movie try to replicate Home Alone, as we see Dennis creating traps, just like Kevin McAllister did, and it has many slapstick tumbles and falls, similar to what was previously seen in Home Alone. Basically, Home Alone was a huge hit, so there would have been lots of pressure to reach that success. So, yeah, part of the movie at times does feel like it's taken its Home Alone pills. Heck, the movie even featured Buzz, but I wouldn't call it a Home Alone clone. It still has enough of its own identity and does its own thing. In fact, the early 90s was the perfect time for a Dennis the Menace movie, as it was a time when troublesome and misbehaved young boys and children in general was actually a popular craze in movies. Heck, there are even some serious horror movie versions of this trope. However, as the 90s went on, the craze fizzled out. But it wasn't through lack of trying, as after Troubled Kids, we then got Troublesome Babies, along with Troublesome Monkeys, and, um, Troublesome Arnies. <laughs> yep, in the 90s, life was just a crazy, wacky adventure full of all kinds of misbehaving. Number seven, Dennis the Menace was part of a string of John Hughes family movies from the 90s. John Hughes would also go on to act as producer for the Dennis the Menace movie, with his company Hughes Entertainment co-producing the production. In fact, during the 90s, Hughes left the teenage genre and in-depth character studies that he was most well known for to work on movies that were more family and child oriented including movies like Beethoven, Baby's Day Out, 101 Dalmatians, and Flubber. And I know that some people were upset over this creative shift in his career, as movies like The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles were funny films, but also had lots of depth and emotion about them too, as it seems that after Home Alone, his work went more childlike with a slapstick approach. But me personally, I didn't really have a problem with it at the time. As a kid, I loved both Dennis the Menace and Beethoven, so the movies he made at that time definitely appealed to its intended younger audience. Dennis the Menace was directed by actor and filmmaker Nick Castle, who also directed The Last Starfighter and wrote Escape from New York, as well as playing Michael Myers in the original Halloween movie all the way back in 1978. So, just take a moment to let that sink in. The Dennis the Menace movie was directed by none other than Michael Myers himself. Man, I love my job! Number six, casting. So when it came to casting, the most important aspect of the entire movie was who could play Dennis the Menace. The production searched high and low to find a young actor who could bring Dennis into the 90s. In fact, 20,000 children auditioned for the iconic role. Yikes, that is a lot of auditions. Six-year-old Mason Gamble won the role because during his audition, he pulled a live worm out of his pocket, which is a very Dennis the menace -y thing to do. After Dennis the Menace, Gamble would go on to have roles in the movies Rushmore and Arlington Road. And this is what he looks like now. Feel old yet? The role of Dennis's long-suffering neighbor, Mr. Wilson, was offered to Leslie Nelson, but he turned it down to star in Surf Ninjas instead. And from that, we can only hope that he fired his casting agent. The part went to legendary screen actor Walter Matthau, who perfectly recaptures the character on the big screen, with him blending the grumpy persona of the character while also feeling sorry for him, with him also being warm and lovable when required. Having him in the movie definitely makes it a better movie. Dennis the movie also acts as a Back to the Future reunion, as Leah Thompson stars as Dennis's mother, Alice Mitchell, and Christopher Lloyd was cast as the movie's villain, the sinister Switchblade Sam. 
While we're talking about the performances, can we just take a moment to do some chit chat about the giant prop that played Walter Matthau's teeth? Look at this thing. Ugh. You wouldn't want to wake up in the middle of the night to find that thing staring at you while you sleep. Ugh. Number five, Christopher Lloyd may have been a little too scary. Although Christopher Lloyd may be best known for playing Doc, he is no stranger to playing villains, as in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he played the memorable Judge Doom. And that performance was already pretty terrifying, but in Dennis the Menace, he takes it to a new level. I mean, just look at the guy. They made him look terrifying. He generally looks like a dangerous criminal. I always got creeped out by that scene where he looms over the small boy in his front yard with the apple. To top it off, he takes the boy's apple away and cuts it with a pocket knife. As a kid, this scene always made me stressed. Like, I was generally worried for that kid. And it seems that I wasn't the only one, as after filming that scene, the child actor who played that little boy was so scared of Christopher Lloyd that he wouldn't go near him while on the set. And yeah, it totally shows on film. That is the nervous face of a kid who's thinking, please Mr. Scary Man, don't eat me. It's a credit to Lloyd's acting, as he's a really nice guy in real life. But regardless, Dennis the Menace is probably the only movie where you'll see Lloyd do a massive fart. So there is that. And despite being a scary character, I think the child audiences get a sense of reassurance when we see the Switchblade Sam character meet his comeuppance at the hands of Dennis. But still, it could probably be argued that Lloyd's portrayal of Switchblade Sam is just as scary, if not scarier, than Judge Doom. Number 4. Movie Legend Composer there was only one movie composer that John Hughes wanted to score Dennis the Menace, and that was, of course, the legendary Jerry Goldsmith, aka my favourite movie composer. Goldsmith was no stranger to scoring child adventure movies, as he previously scored Gremlins and Explorers. And in Dennis the Menace, he delivers a warm, homely score that captures child innocence, but can also dive into mania when required. His score for Switchblade Sam was pretty creepy, which would have helped to put the child audiences on edge. It's not one of my favourite of his scores, but there's nothing wrong with it either. It's competent and has that sort of magical goldsmith sound. However, there are some claims that he borrows some cues from the score that he had previously used for Total Recall. But it's not uncommon for film composers to copy and paste parts of previous music into other scores, so there's that. But yeah, if you're a fan of Total Recall and have ever watched Dennis the Menace and thought that something felt familiar, other than the fact that both movies feature dangerous menaces, it's probably because you're listening to bits of Total Recall's movie score. It tastes like paint. And wood. Number 3. Title Rename so as mentioned, the original Dennis the Menace comic strip was published the exact same day as a UK comic strip also called Dennis the Menace, all the way back in 1951. Jump 42 years later to 1993, and it seems this amazing coincidence was still affecting the Dennis the Menace brand, particularly the movie. As when released in the UK, the movie had to get its title changed, or rather simply cut down to just Dennis. As not to confuse child audiences who may think that this was a movie adaptation of the UK Dennis the Menace. I mean, yeah, I get the title change, but it doesn't feel quite right. You can't have Dennis without the Menace. It just feels incomplete and wrong. And to top that off, the US Dennis the Menace was in the UK too, so I think it could have worked without too much confusion. It even got a completely different movie poster too, look at that! I actually prefer this poster, as it's loud and energetic. Whereas the US one felt restrained and subtle, with Dennis's menacing ways being more hinted at, it's not like that on the UK poster, nope, he is in full on menace mode, showing you a crazy kid who will slingshot you in the face. In later years when released on home media, the UK's title would revert back to its complete title of Dennis the Menace. However, the coincidence would also cause changes to the UK Dennis the Menace, as that franchise would get rebranded as Dennis and Nasher. Oh my word! So many Dennises who are menaces! Whatever can we do? Number 2. Aftermath So in the same year the movie came out, a new animated series also came out, called All New Dennis the Menace. 
which was once again produced by Deke, and Dennis was voiced by one of the kindergartners from Kindergarten Cop. The show only lasted 13 episodes and has slipped into obscurity. In fact, I don't even think it was shown in this part of the world. And if it was, I didn't know about it. Then, to help promote the movie, there was a Super Nintendo video game. Well, what can be said about the game that the AVGN didn't already say? Okay, well at least it captures the look of the movie. So you know that this is a game of the movie version and not a cartoon or comic book. And it is bright and colourful. But... Yeah, the game is also kind of nightmarish, as the characters have these weird giant bobbleheads, which honestly makes it look like some kind of surreal David Lynch nightmare. I mean, just look at some of these characters. Ugh, that is some scare fuel right there. Your adventure starts off in Mr. Wilson's house, and from there, just like the movie, you have to take on Switchblade Sam, who in the game looks like Vigo the Carpathian, if he stole evil Where's Waldo's sweater. That's all I have to say about this game. I tried to play it as a kid, but couldn't really be bothered. Then there was a direct-to-video sequel called Dennis the Menace Strikes Again, which came out in 1998 with that little boy from Liar Liar as everyone's favorite menace. In fact, none of the original cast returns. Now, I've never seen this sequel, but it does look kind of crappy and like it's missing the heart and soul of the original movie. But I digress, I've never seen it. However, a YouTube channel called Hats Off Entertainment did an in-depth review of this movie. So if you want to know more, then I recommend watching that video. It's a very well thought out and thorough review. Then finally in 2007, there was yet another director video sequel called A Dennis the Menace Christmas. Yep, Dennis is such a menace, he's now going to ruin Christmas for everyone. This entry oddly features David Wagner as Mr. Wilson. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. And unlike Dennis the Menace Strikes Again, which I knew about but never saw, I didn't even know about a Dennis the Menace Christmas till making this episode. But to be fair, by 2007, I had grown up and was now into adult things. Once again, none of the cast from the previous movie returns. And this Dennis the Menace does a take on the classic Christmas Carol story. Spoilers, it hasn't got the best reviews. So all up, the Dennis the Menace film series is actually a trilogy. Quadrilogy if you want to include the 1987 TV movie. By the way, do not take a shot every time I say the words Dennis or Menace in this episode, or you will get messed up. And if you have already done so, then all I have to say is, how many fingers am I holding up? Number one, Dennis the box office menace. Fans of Dennis the Menace finally got a chance to see him on the big screen in June 1993, and it was financially successful, making just over $117 million on a $35 million budget. So it was big business for its day. However, the Dennis the Menace movie must have stolen the film critics' pocket money and given them wedgies, as they were really hard on this film, despite being a children's movie. There were comparisons made to the Home Alone movies, stating that it's not as good as those films, which to me isn't fair, as despite similarities in the physical comedy, this isn't Home Alone, it's its own thing. And it was also felt that the movie was too tame compared to other children's movies of that time, and that the world of the movie doesn't feel realistic or grounded in reality. I mean... Yeah, this isn't Schindler's List, it's Dennis the Frickin' Menace. It's meant to be a live-action cartoon. What were they expecting? Walter Matthau's performance as Mr. Wilson was praised and considered a strong point. However, Roger Ebert didn't like Christopher Lloyd's Switchblade Sam character, which, as he puts it, put him off recommending the movie. Even the little kid who played Dennis, Mason Gamble, couldn't avoid the furious backlash of Dennis the Menace, as he was nominated for a Razzie. Jeez, guys, he was only seven! Calm down! <laughs> Way to pick on a little kid! I mean, he wasn't that bad in the role. But he did win a Best Youth Actor Award, so I guess that kind of balances everything out. Look, maybe I'm not looking at the movie subjectively and observing it through rose-tinted glasses, as it is a movie from my childhood that I loved. But I don't think the movie is all that bad. It came out at a time in the 90s when theatrical movies based on old children's franchises were being made, like The Flintstones, Richie Rich, and Casper. And I think that Dennis the Menace is the better one out of all those movies. It captures the innocent, mischievous side of childhood nicely, as we see the world through the lens of Dennis. And I like the way the movie looks. It has a colorful, warm glow that takes you back to a more innocent time, a time of being a little kid. 
being brought up by your parents and playing in the street with your friends. And there was plenty in the movie that kept me entertained and chuckling when I was a kid. Maybe this isn't a movie for modern children, as it'll probably seem old and dated to them, but it did its job back in 1993, as it appealed to kids of that time, not the middle-aged critics who got their underpants in a twist. And for people of my generation, it's always fun to watch this movie every now and then, and to go on that good old trip down memory lane, and while watching the movie, briefly return to your childhood. the movie isn't that bad. I mean, it nowhere near deserves its 27% it has on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, yeah, it's not a movie masterpiece by any means, but it's a nice movie with lots of wacky shenanigans, made equally with as much heart and soul. And it is exactly what it says it is. A movie adaptation of Dennis the Menace. Exactly what it says on the label. Anyway, I'm Minty, and the real-life boy who Dennis is based on is now 75 years old. True story. See ya!